I know, uh, you know, interviewers look for more than coding. Yes, they are looking for soft skills, right? In terms of storytelling and how is your um, communication style. So, which definitely makes a big difference in interviews. Would you like to add your points on that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, like a lot of candidates, uh, they focus entirely, almost mm. entirely on coding, but interviews are as much about how you communicate as what you code as well. So soft skills like storytelling, clarity of thought, structured communication, they do make a huge difference. I mean, you may know a plethora of items, but I would only be able to understand what you were able to communicate to me, right? And unfortunately, we have that one hour only to portray what we know. So yes, uh, we cannot uh, overemphasize, but yes, um, communication plays a very important part. Example, let's say when I ask you, hey, can you explain your past projects, right? It's not enough to just say that I built X. It could be a very technically challenging project and all, but that does not give me a clear picture. Rather, you need to tell a story, standard format, like which everybody knows, star format, situation, task, action, is it? But that's just a framework. The, what was the task? What was the trade-off that you considered? Why you made a certain decisions? What impact it had? Were there some challenges to your solution? How you adapted? Let's say somebody in the review may have challenged your solution, right? And how did you adapt to it? Sometimes it can also be, okay, share your failures. It's fine. When you take a decision, it backfired. But what was the learning from there? And that's where this storytelling thing comes into picture. It's not like robust, like mundane, okay, I built ABCD and this was the technical things I did. But what was the story behind it? So I think that almost helps every time to drive the point, right? It shows your ownership, your problem solving mm -hmm. ability, your leadership potential, even for the technical rounds as well. And another one, a big aspect I would say, which can come under the soft skill is handling ambiguity and thinking aloud. So the interviewers do want to see how you reason, how you are breaking down your problem into small chunks. And also, are you adaptable or not to adapt a new solution if you hit a red block, roadblock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can communicate your approach clearly, engage the interviewer, justify your decisions, it always instantly sets you apart from the other candidates who may be technically strong as you only, but silence or silent or unclear under pressure. And that can help you like differentiate you from the other candidates. So I think, yeah, it's a very important uh, aspect, often uh, underplayed, but soft skills like communication, storytelling, the how you portray your, your knowledge is very important and do makes the difference in interview. Yeah, I think you definitely, uh, you know, uh, share the differentiation, basically what matters at an interview stage, very nicely, you know, done as such. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that. Now, apart from DSA, system design, storytelling, now what is important is, of course, how you communicate, that is fine. But what about a mock interview? Do you think um, just without any practice, okay, without any practice with a seasoned uh, senior engineer, okay, will that make a difference? Yeah, in uh, interviewing, I'm sure there are more chances that you may not clear the interviews, right? So that is where mock interviews definitely play a big role right in helping you having more chances of you clearing those interviews so what unique value does it bring along could you you know share your uh, feedback your on that um sure i mean we all know right practice makes a man woman equally perfect right so yeah it's an important part of preparation you have to practice now uh it could be practicing alone mock as you mentioned the mock so Sometimes you maybe you have 20 years experience, you've already given a lot of interviews, you're already taking a lot of interviews. Maybe that constitutes the part of your practice. That also can be considered. So the point is you should have practiced what you're going to play at the ground, right? That's a very important point. So coming back to this practicing alone versus mock, especially like the candidates who do who feel they're underprepared in terms of practicing. See, it is it alone is helpful to get your basics right and run through problems. But a mock interview adds a completely different dimension. So for example, it simulates, first of all, the real world environment. And you know, the major difference in the real world environment is, is the same question, but is the pressure, the timing, the back and forth with the interviewer. That plays the crux for which I feel more than 20, 30% of the candidates, they are not even ready. They have not practiced that part. And when you, with the same question, the same preparation, the moment you throw these metrics, they lose the track example, in a real world, an interviewer will often interrupt you. They will ask focused, in-depth questions, which can derail you from your structured line of thought. 
you must have prepared, okay, I will go like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I will cover my whole flow. But the interviewer interruption will be there, which is a real world thing, which we have to expect, right? So mocks do help you practice those, handling those interruptions, answering the specific questions, while keeping the bigger picture in mind, and then returning back to your original structured answer. That's where the mock thing will come into that. Apart from that, if you do a mock with a really experienced engineer, it will be incredibly valuable for the, your preparation in the sense that they will give you some real world insights. The actual thing that happens in a real interview. For example, if I'm taking an interview, what kind of depth I want? Where is it ambiguity that I have left deliberately and I want the candidate to address it? At times, a candidate may take a particular thread and go very deep into that because he or she is comfortable in that topic. But maybe I want to um, I want her to come back to the original topic. They may have not finalize the scope of the problem to begin with. So these kind of inputs will always be helpful, which you can get into the mock, which really helps you. And those are those 20% difference of your non-selected to selected criteria. So I think, yeah, I really believe that this mock interview with the experienced engineer who either have worked or have taken interview at that level will be incredibly valuable for the preparation. Yeah, I know. I also do believe mocks really play so much of a difference when I have seen those experience with my mentees. And there's always been a difference. People with mocks have literally cleared interviews, got offers, but without mocks, it has been difficult. But you know, there is also this AI mocks which are available in the market, right? So would you be um, able to <clears throat> differentiate between what is something like a real mock with a senior fine engineer or, you know, with a senior person, then compared to an AI mock, what do you want to say, you know? Mm, them? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, see, I'm not taking them personally, so I'm not be able to comment much, but yes, there are, I heard like, there are some AI based mocks these days. And I must say they, they can be great for additional practice. And that's important. As I said, you keep practicing with your friends. You keep practicing with these AI mocks. You keep practicing. Some people do practice with this mirror thing in front and all right. So, as we said, practice always makes you perfect. So the more you practice, it's going to be helpful. But they cannot replicate the nuanced feedback that a real engineer or experience, I would not say real, I would say the experience engineer for that particular role and domain can give you. Like, as I mentioned, how you approach the trade-offs, explain your reasoning, recover when you get stuck. That kind of feedback, I'm not sure. Uh, the AI has not adapted to that level that it gives that real uh, nuanced feedback. That's why a mock with an experienced fine engineer, someone who has been through that interviews is often much more helpful because it will give you some actionable insights, realistic pressure, and also personalized guidance. AI works on the prompts, right? We work, uh, like I worked with a couple of AI agents and all on the back end. They have those predefined prompts, but a person to person situation differs. Maybe you are good at something which my mock has already covered, but you are lacking in some skills which my mock uh, prompts does not cover. Like, sorry, my AI prompt does not cover. So maybe that feedback will never be shared with you, right? So that's why I feel it's far more valuable for a serious preparation that you go with this um, real world mocks with the real engineers, with the experienced engineers. Along with that, try to cover that up like because you cannot take, let's say, infinite sessions with the real person, right? But with the self mocks or with the AI mocks, the, the, the best thing is that you can keep practicing the same thing again and again. Maybe to how to modify, how to just like structure your thought within 45 minutes how to solve a problem along with making the interviewer understand and code it parallelly in 18, 20 minutes, a DSA problem. This kind of time-based preparation you can do, but for sure, I don't think that it can replace the uh, real engineer, the, like the actual person feedback kind of mocks. You nailed it, right? Yes. So with AI um, mocks, there could be generic feedback, not real feedback. Real actionable feedback yep. would be definitely done by a real person, like a, you know, real person. So that makes a difference. But after you have a proper mock with a person, with a real person, I think you should, you should be fine taking a few AI mocks. That's okay. But then at least initially, you should be able to practice with senior engineers because they are the people who are in the panel, who are in the interview panel. So they are in the right uh, place to tell you where you're going wrong. Where do you need to focus? Exactly. So they can give yes. you the right actionable feedback. 